In our last chapter, we were looking at the electronic structure of atoms. We looked at where those electrons are in a ground state atom, and we put them in the 1s, the 2s, and so forth. We also looked at, once we had that complete, how that electronic structure tied into the periodic table, and we could get those valence electron numbers off the periodic table. We saw that the noble gases over on the far right hand side were the most stable of the electron configurations, and atoms that were close to those noble gases were highly reactive as they tried to gain or lose electrons to become like the noble gases. In this chapter and the chapter to come, we're going to start focusing in on the structure of the electrons for molecules or compounds, whether they be ionic or covalent. So let us look at uh, this uh, introduction here. We're going to be focusing on what's called Lewis theory with this chapter. So we're going to introduce ourselves to bonding what holds those molecules and ionic compounds together and look at it in terms of the um, electron structure. Throughout this chapter, we're going to be looking at how they're bonded together. We're going to be focusing in on three bonding theories. We'll start with this chapter, and that's Lewis theory. Once we look at Lewis theory, then we'll be able to look at valence bond theory, and then lastly, we'll look at molecular orbital theory. So these are all different ways to think about how compounds form within their electronic structure, um, and they're different ways of looking at it, depending upon what you're needing to know. So let's kind of summary the, summarize the different types of bonding that we know about at this point. The first type of bonding that we are going to look at is going to be ionic bonding, and we'll focus on that in this lesson. We learned prior to this chapter that ionic bonding occurs between metals and nonmetals. So we have an example here of sodium chloride. So table salt would be an example of that. We have a metal and a nonmetal, and that's really all we focused on last um, in previous chapters about it. We talked about how this is formed by the transfer of electrons. The sodium with its uh, valence electron would like to lose that valence electron, become a cation, and the chloride being right next to the noble gases would like to gain that electron to become an anion, so we transfer those electrons. So that's why they're trying to get that noble gas configuration. The metal really doesn't want the electron. It is easy to remove. The chlorine really has a electro high electron affinity, so it wants that electron. Covalent bonding is the other type of bonding. Now, when we talked about covalent bonding before, we talked about it as only between nonmetals and nonmetals. We talked about how this is a sharing of electrons that um, occur to form a covalent bond. Now, we're going to be looking at why they share electrons as we go into this, but what's happening here is we have a nonmetal that wants electrons to get to a noble gas configuration and another nonmetal that wants the electron in order to get a noble gas structure, and so they have to share those electrons. And we will be looking very closely at that sharing as we look at Lewis theory. There is a third type of bonding that we really did not talk about, and I'm only going to briefly mention here, and that is metallic bonding. When metallic bonding occurs, it does not form a compound, and that's why we didn't talk about it. We talked about compounds, ionic compounds, and covalent or molecular compounds, but there is a type of bonding called uh, metallic bonding. It occurs between metals. It does not form a compound, and that's all we're going to really need to know about that right now. It is something that we will look at um, eventually. So our um, use of Lewis theory has to utilize something called a Lewis dot symbol. And here's the definition of a Lewis dot symbol. It shows the symbol. So we see, you know, potassium is a K, but it also shows the number of valence electrons as a dot. So here we have um, hydrogen. We know that everything in this group here has one valence electron, so they're showing it as one dot. The 2A family has two valence electrons, and we see it as two dots, and notice how they're separated. The 3 has three dots and so forth. Now, the only thing that's really um, unusual about what we see here is you notice these guys here in this family have two dots, but they're spread apart. Helium is shown to be unique in that they put the two dots next to each other, and the reason for that is those electrons fill up that, that 1S shell, and they cannot... Um, get involved in bonding. And these that are spread out, yes, they're still filling up the 
uh, S shell, but they can get involved in bonding, and so um, they're spread out. Okay, so let's focus in on ionic bonding using this Lewis theory. Okay, that's our first kind of bonding we want to focus at. Um, so what is an ionic bond? An ionic bond is an electrostatic force that's holding cations and anions together. That's what the bond is. A bond is described by what is the force that holds those atoms together. And in the case of an ionic bond, this is an electrostatic force. Remember that it's just a sophisticated way of saying opposite charges attract each other. And that is what's holding an ionic compound together. So what we're going to do is use Lewis dot symbols to show the formation of those ions and then that electrostatic force will just be the natural outcome of that. So we're going to begin with looking at um, using Lewis dot symbols. We're going to have a lithium and we have one valence electron so I'll put that as a dot reacting with fluorine. Now if you look at a periodic table and you look at how many valence electrons fluorine has, it has seven valence electrons. So I will put the seven valence electrons around. Usually we spread them out, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then we start pairing them up. So those are the Lewis dot symbols of the elements that make up lithium fluoride. What happens when you form an ionic bond is the lithium doesn't want the electron and will donate it to the fluorine. So we show that donation as an, as an arrow, okay? So once that happens, what do we have? We have lithium that has lost that valence electron, so it's going to have a plus charge, and we have fluorine that has gained that electron, so now it has the eight valence electrons, and it will have a minus charge. Now we have a positive charge and a negative charge. They will be attracted to each other, and that's an ionic bond, an electrostatic charge, electrostatic force attracting between the cation and the anion. Well, let's do another example. Let's do an example of lithium and oxygen, okay, and, and form the ionic compound for that. Now lithium we know has one valence electron, so I'll draw that one valence electron. If you look at oxygen on the periodic table, then we'll see that it has a six above it, so this is, it's in the 6A group, so we'll put six electrons around it, okay? So we have it six electrons around it. Now the lithium doesn't want this electron, so it will donate its electron to the oxygen. But this is not quite where it wants to be yet. Oxygen doesn't want to have seven valence electrons. Oxygen would like to be like the nearest noble gas and have eight valence electrons. So we would have to have another lithium with its valence electron giving its electron to the oxygen. At that point, both of them can be happy, or all three of these atoms can be happy. Lithium lost that one valence electron. The other lithium lost that one valence electron. So we have two of these. And we have the oxygen, and now it gained two electrons, so it has eight. And if you've gained two electrons, you will have a two minus charge. So this shows what we knew about lithium and oxygen if they have um, from where they were on the periodic table. Way back in chapter two, we learned how to write good formulas for ionic compounds. And, but at that point, we were just looking at a periodic table and seeing where lithium was and knowing that lithium had a plus charge and looking at where oxygen was and knowing that it had a two minus charge and we did a kind of a crisscross thing and came up with Li2O as the formula. But this is what's happening with the electrons. So Lewis theory shows the electrons and playing their role in how they move in order to form your ionic compound.